First of all, ladies, how are you? We're fine. How, how are, you? are you? I'm all right, thank Good. you. <laughs> um, well, before we get into the new album, you like to play a lot of different instruments. What was the latest one that you bought for the band? For the band? Um, the Dobro, I think? Yes. Um, for me, at least. I think uh, so. That one or the pink piano? Yes, Maybe. that's true. The last one we bought, like, uh, yeah. physically, that's actually like a, a miniature drum set. Yeah. Okay. Um, for children? Yeah, a children's drum set <clears throat> that we're going to have uh, as a part of our setup on stage. Did you use it for the album? Uh, yeah, we did. At least we did uh, some of the percussion. Okay. Mm. And uh, we're now we're going to use it live, too. Well, and why this particular instrument? What, what made it... Uh, it's it's small and it's practical, so it's a part of uh, our stage plot to have a, a second drum set on stage. And it actually sounds fantastic. It okay. does. You'll see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, yeah. Um, but so so you like to play? Um, I, I believe everybody plays uh, almost every instrument. Almost. So is it difficult then when when you go on stage to decide who will play what and what song? No, it, it's it's the decided for each song. Okay. So yeah. So set so it's not like, uh, whoops, there are uh, drums on that song. <laughs> then we probably, I'm like, I want to play yeah. bass and bass. Get the ah, fuck out of my way. No, we've decided, it's fixed. It, it, does that um, coincide with the songwriting as well? Because everybody, I assume everybody writes their own, uh, comes up with their own <coughs> ideas. So. Sometimes, uh, it, normally the one that uh, writes the song sings it okay. as well. And uh, if you've got an idea, a very strong idea as a songwriter, how to play, for example, the guitar or the piano or whatever, you most likely are to play it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And well, is it easy then to find a consensus uh, as to? Sometimes it's very natural, uh, as we have our strengths and weaknesses. Mm -hmm. Or oh, well, basically, we have our strengths and our our limitations. Yeah. yeah. Or challenges. No, so we have. Um, sometimes it's really, really easy. But of course, you're gonna play drum, drums on that one. That's a typical you kind of drum song. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I think like Tudi and myself, we both like to play the bass a lot. Okay. And we have very different ways of playing. So it's very, very obvious in which song we should play the bass on. But then again, maybe the, the song requires an accordion, and not, I'm not really a good accordion player, which Tudi is a great accordion player. Mm -hmm. So then she will take the accordion, and I will take the bass. So it's, it's different uh, reasons for why it ends up like this. Okay, and, and well, the, as mentioned, uh, you use a lot of different inf instruments. What, what do you get out of, out of all these uh, eccentric, let's call it that, uh, instruments? First of all, it never gets boring at all. It keeps on. Uh, uh, we keep on developing ourselves as musicians, and uh, um, like technically all the time. Uh, and uh, imagine being a guitarist in a in a band like in ten years that we've been together. Mm -hmm. Maybe sometimes it gets a little bit static and. And when you play one instrument, you sometimes establish one way of doing things, you know? Mm -hmm. But uh, since we rotate and change positions all the time, that we never get stuck in, in certain patterns, mm -hmm. and that keeps um, uh, the development floating, uh, mm -hmm. kind of. Yeah. yeah. So, the, so the dynamic changes, so it's not yeah. the same sound. In, in and we ha yeah, because we have so different ways in approaching music, uh, or the instruments that you will uh, I think that's a big uh, or an important reason of why Katsunyamer is sounding like it does. Mm -hmm. and it, well, I can imagine, does it also um, bring up problems in terms of arranging songs? That, that you want a certain sound on it, but there, there's simply not it enough people to play it li uh, live? We've got a common ground musically, and uh, that's how we met through the music. And that's the reason why we play together, because we understand each other's musical angle, you know. So it hasn't been that many challenges in that sense. It's more advanced, even. actually. Yeah. yeah. And if it has been a discussion, it's only in the end been a positive thing, because through, through uh, the friction, the, yeah, to the friction, it becomes development. And then, well, let's uh, go over to the new record then, Rockland. What was the mindset before you went into to the whole thing? <coughs> nothing. <laughs> Actually, uh, but really, it was nothing because we um, we needed to clear our heads mm -hmm. 
Uh, and we needed to... Why? Why? Well, basically, we've been on tour since 2008. Okay. Uh, and on top of each other since 2008, uh, or actually almost before that, but that was when we really started to tour. Mm -hmm. And we have become somewhat of a live band, uh, which we are extremely proud of. Mm -hmm. We've released two albums, uh, almost as the same time as we've been on tour. So we wanted to schedule time to write songs and just get a break from the, the cast and jammer life and the cast and jammer way of living mm -hmm. and be four individuals, go separate uh, ways to write and then come back together to show each other. Uh, and I think if we hadn't done that, this album would sound pretty different than it does now. And maybe it would be good too, but I think it was important to have, you know, just uh, the, the four individuals mm -hmm. in, back into the group again. Was this something that you, as members of the band, needed? Just this separation? Just, just to focus on yourself for once? Yeah, oh yeah, for me at least, and I think I speak for everyone. That, uh, We've been a foursome uh, mm. person almost uh, for many years now and done everything together. Then uh, we had to try to find ourselves again a little bit. Mm. And it was a necessity, mm. I think. And I think the album's got a sense of freedom in it because of it, uh, of freshness. And uh, I breathe better than mm -hmm. I think when I listen to it as a composer and a, and a band member and I think I would have done if we hadn't had the, the year off. Did this uh, period change your outlook on the band? I think so. I think um, uh, you get a, a, a better perspective when you take a step back. Hmm. It's like when you're doing a painting and if you're up close doing a painting, looking at the details, thinking about the colors, you sort of lose the whole idea of the image. We have to take a, spe a step back to, mm -hmm. to get a clear view. And I think that's what we needed because we've been so heavily inside this bubble for so many years mm -hmm. um, that it was absolutely necessary. And I think it uh, added the air that Anomari talks about um, to make it more us again, mm -hmm. not just like a, a touring group that's constantly trying to win over the audience, or which has been a fantastic journey. Mm. Uh, but it was important to make the album we wanted to make, what comes from the inside of each and every member. And I believe when you had this year off, everybody went uh, their own ways, traveled to different places. Um, I'm not sure which places you went to, but some of the places were London, I believe, um, Nashville and, and New Orleans. Um, so Marianne, where did you go? I went to Texas okay. uh, <laughs> first, uh, yeah, for a week uh, at South by Southwest okay. and uh, met a lot of people that I wanted to write with later. Mm -hmm. uh, just getting inspiration from a crazy city. Austin, Texas is an amazing city, especially mm -hmm. around that time. And then I went straight to Nashville after that for 10 days or so. Uh, writing a lot of music, uh, a lot of music I never even showed the girls, you know, just being creative without any plan or limitations mm. or any agenda at all. Uh, and then I came home and, and continued to write home. And then when you listen to the, the record now, do you hear some of those influences? Oh yeah, like Curvaceous Needs. Mm. I think uh, I started to write that with a Norwegian folk musician and it sounded a little bit more Norwegian when mm. we started. Uh, and then I brought it into to, uh, to Nashville with me and had it in the back of my mind. And I think I added some Nashville and Texas and took it back home. Sort okay. of, yeah. And, and Amri, where, where did you go? <coughs> I went to Nashville too uh, on a separate uh, trip. Uh, I just I am a sucker for American all American music, so mm. it was anyways a, a trip for me to to just go into my roots musically and. Uh, just uh, absorb the energy in the in the city, even though it's uh, it's more touristy now, and and, uh, and everything, it still got the vibe. You still feel it. At least I did. I love that city. And <laughs> we've been there once before as a band, and uh, so we know a few people there. So we hooked up with different uh, songwriters, uh, and I wrote a little bit on the hotel room. None of the songs that I wrote there. Are on the album, but I think they're they were important to me 
anyways, to this on the journey to find the songs that I wanted mm -hmm. to for this album. Mm -hmm. And then, was there anything you say you, you like uh, traditional American music? Was there anything you discovered about that type of music that you didn't know before? Um, actually, I was a little bit surprised how they work because it's, uh, it's like we've talked about many times that it's a factory that they show okay. up at work and just make a song or two and by the end of the day they're done. It might not be the, the best song in the world, but that's how they work every single day. And sometimes in between there you get a strong song or a hit. And so, uh, for, because to me, making songs has always been like a dynamic uh, thing. Or like it happens when it happens and sometimes you get an idea. Right. And that's pretty much how I write songs too. But I started to try to force myself to find ideas because there's always something to find. Mm -hmm. I think that's the most important lessons, lesson I um, I got there. Okay. And then um, when it came time to come together, was there a certain point that, that everybody said, okay, now we're gonna, we have enough ideas, we can... Well, we, uh, we ended up with uh, 83 songs mm -hmm. okay. to choose from. Uh, and of course, from 83 songs, not 83 would be a cast and jammer song to go on album and uh, that that would be amazing <laughs> uh, so it was kind of easy to find the first batch basically mm. so we all made a list of uh, our favorites okay. uh, we just added them to a dropbox and we could listen in peace and quiet we recorded like easy sketches of them and um, I think there was eight songs we agreed on pretty early on and then we had a producer that helped us with the rest, which is mm. necessary in a band. Mm. Well, the, the, I believe on the previous two albums, you were, the, uh, I'm going to pronounce his name wrong, but... Uh, uh, Mats? Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. You wrote yeah, a lot yeah, of... Yeah. So, so this time around, was, was it different that you, you brought more of the, the I writing? just think it was important to us as musicians mm. and as songwriters. Most of us have written songs. Marianne has been writing some songs since yeah. she was nine, I think. Yeah. yeah and uh, so uh, more or less, uh, most of us has uh, written songs all our lives. Mm. And uh, it's a little bit strange to play in a band for that long and not to write songs. And right. we have done that with the first album as well. But the, the, the main percentage of the, the album was Matsu's songs because mm. that's how the band started, right. arranging other this guy's songs. And he has uh, been really important to us all along uh, mm. as a kind of a invisible fifth band member. Mm -hmm. The masculine, a little bit dark and quirky, weird world that he creates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and he's present on this album too as a co-writer. Uh, so we will probably never stop uh, <coughs> working with him. He's a fantastic songwriter. Yeah. Is there, is there anything you took away from working with him when, when you wrote your, well, you, you've been writing songs from very early on, but is, is it like a learning process as well, having worked with him? It, it's a continuous learning process throughout your life, I think. Mm -hmm. At least uh, it is to me, and I think uh, every songwriter I know feels like that, because when you, when you write songs, you use whatever you have inside, mm -hmm. and that changes from time to time, whatever you experience or whichever people you might meet, mm -hmm. uh, that will influence you and will probably change the way you write as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's also kind of like a muscle. I, I can feel sometimes if, if I've been writing like uh, regularly with, together with other people, you have a certain buttons turned on already, mm -hmm. so you're like prepared. Right. But there are, to me at least, there's different ways of writing songs. I could write pop songs for other people that I really have to be a hundred percent from my heart but working musically with another artist mm -hmm. then you can write like four songs a day but sometimes uh, you have something inside you just want to let out and you write completely differently because uh, you, you look at the look at it a bit a little bit different than you and you are probably a little bit more afraid to show it to everyone because mm -hmm. it's a piece of your heart and it's it's a little bit more scary <laughs>